All right, so we're putting the wheel hub assembly on a 2012 Avenger SE. And I'll take you through the steps on changing it out yourself. All right, once you got the car up in the air and the wheel off, I like to turn the wheel and take this brake assembly off first. So uh, on these Avengers 18 mil, you got a bolt back here and a bolt down here. And we'll go ahead and rip those off. And then uh, this rudder will come off. And... Uh, We'll move on to taking the bearing off. Alright, go. Alright, so we're I'm going to take the bottom one off first. <coughs> that one, and you got one up here. <coughs> and then, uh, we're going to suspend this out of the way. Uh, I use these OTC hangers, but if if you don't have that, you can use, uh, well, we got to compress this down a little bit. If you don't have one of these, you can use a bungee cord or whatever you have. All right, so just, I usually just hang it off the uh, coil spring here. That's just so you don't ruin your, you, you don't want to hang your uh, this off of your brake hose. You'll ruin your brake hose. So now your, uh, your rotor here should pop right off. You might have to persuade it a little bit. Uh, so anyway, I'll, I'll get this off and then we'll take this axle nut off. Okay. All right, so uh, I just took a rubber mile and kind of hit it a couple spots. And then hit it back here once and it comes off. Sometimes it can be rusted on there. This is also a good time uh, if you're doing this. I'll show you when I put it back together, but uh, there'll be a lot of rust. See all that rust under there? You want to take a... Uh, the scotch brad or whatever and clean all that up real good on both ends that'll prevent your uh, vibration when you hit the brakes uh if you leave all that rust like if you would leave all this rust right here all this build up rust in between here and there when you hit a brake you'll get a lot of vibration you might think your rotor's warped that's not what it is it's that rust so we'll clean that up before we put it back together so anyway, right now we're going to hit this axle nut I believe it's uh it's like 32 mil. We'll see if a little earthquake can get it off. Uh, it's pretty rusty. It may not get it off. We'll see. Sorry about that compressor. This thing's pretty rusty. So you want when it's smoking like that, you want to grab it with your bare hands and pull it off. <laughs> Ow! Alright, so uh, now we got the bolts back behind here, we gotta get out. So I'll uh, get set up for that and then we'll film that. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to take this uh, ABS speed sensor wire loose. I don't, uh, what I'm going to do is take these two bolts out and pull this forward and move the axle all the way so I get easier access to these bolts. But you don't want to pull this forward and leave this hooked up real tight. So I'm just going to take uh, these two brackets loose and uh, make sure when we drop this down, we don't pull too hard on this sensor wire. So now it's, it's pretty loose. Uh, we got some leeway before we had none. So if you would drop this down, you might damage that. So anyway, that's the reason for that. Now we'll go ahead and uh, knock these two out. What size bolt are those? 21. And once we move this up, we can pull this axle out and give us access to that bearing.
have the have the nut on a little bit and give it a couple love taps to persuade those to go out. Pull those out. Sometimes you gotta pull up on a little bit, put some of the pressure on. All right, then you should be able to pull this out. Make sure your uh, axle is loose before you do that. If, though, if there's a lot of rust in here, sometimes this axle will be stuck in there a little bit. I already got this one loose, so it shouldn't be a problem. This was too long. Just kind of hold the axle so it doesn't get too much stress put on it. Both part ones always have a long, a really long uh, nose on them for some reason. We'll just slide it out. Now you got full access to your hub here that we're going to take off. Uh, I think those are 15. So I'm going to cut the camera while I find my socket and get it set up. Cool. All right, you can see here with the axle out, we got full access to the uh, to the hub. It's 15 mil. There's four bolts and. You can also see it was a good idea to loosen this up because this would have been all the way back here. There's no way you could pull this forward. Uh, even now it's a little bit tight, but it's not bad. So anyway, uh, get something on these 15. You should pull right out. Now, these Chrysler's, I've had a lot of problem getting this off of the spindle itself. May have to use a slide hammer on it. Sometimes they'll just pop right out, other times uh, it's a real bear to get these off. <coughs> so technically the only thing holding on right now is just in there and it's probably, you know, rust and stuff. So I'm going to put this back in here, put one bolt back in uh, to hold it. Have that light. So all I'm doing is just putting one bolt in here to kind of hold it. And, uh, you know, usually you can just tap on these and they'll come out, but I have not had good luck with these prices. Well, this one's making a liar out of me. Alright, so that's pretty crazy because I've done uh, two or three you can see all the rust around here I've done two or three this year uh, this style of Avenger and one of them was a 2014 with 50,000 miles on it and it was a bear to get out of here uh, this is actually older it's 2012 but you can see all this rust builds up around here and inside here know if you can tell it's just complete rust in here and uh, it really makes it hard to get these out sometimes if uh, yours won't come out, they have a you can get a uh, slide hammer with the hub with the hub adapter on it and put that on here and just slide hammer it out. Uh, I thought we were going to have to do on this one, but we didn't. So anyway, now I'll get something in here and clean this up real good. Uh, be careful with your sensor right here. I'm going to go ahead and pull it out so I don't uh, scuff it with my uh, with my angle uh, grinder and then. Uh, We'll lube this up and then we'll put the new one in. But uh, yeah, that's that was actually pretty surprising. It came out that easy. So uh, next next thing I'll do is clean all this up in here, spray it with a little lube, and then we'll start putting the new one back together. All right, so you can see here I cleaned it out real good and put a little oil in there, uh, so it's lubed up. And so now we're going to put the uh, hub back in there. 
should slide right in if you got it nice and clean. And we'll go ahead and start a few of the bolts here. And I'll probably, you know, I'll pull this bolt back out and we'll tighten it back up. But uh, I did not take the speed sensor out because it's seized in there. I don't want to have to put a new speed sensor on it, so I just worked around it. I used a uh, combination of uh, my angle grinder with 3M on there. And you can get in there with one of these or something similar and just try to get as much rust and clean up as well as you can. And then go ahead and spray it a little bit and uh, wipe it down. So, uh, going to go ahead and start these four and then we'll torque them down. Uh, all right, so we'll get them all started. We'll torque them down to factory spec on these. Respect. Two, two Uggadugas. <coughs> nope. There you go, that's factory spec on that. What's that factory spec? Two Uggadugas. Two Uggadugas. So we put the axle back in. Get your little washer. Go ahead and lock. You gotta turn it a little bit to get the lock back in. Once it gets locked back in, that'll allow you to put it back up here. If this is still sticking out, you'll have a hard time getting it back up here. So, anyway, now we'll put those two bolts in. things to go back. You can tell on this side of the bolt uh, it's got splines on it. I just kind of tap them in there a little bit. You know, your nut, will draw, your nut will pull it forward, but I like tapping it a little. Otherwise, you'll have to get a wrench over here and hold it. Again, you got 21 mil on these. This bottom one's turning, so I have to get an open end wrench and hold it. And I'll finish torquing that up, and then I'll catch you. Uh, we'll put this on next. All right, so like I said before, this is turning a little bit, so you just just have a 21 millimeter wrench. It won't take much. Just hold it. be into that. So uh, now we'll go ahead and uh, put this nut on. And on this we will look up the factory torque spec on it and torque it to that. I'll let you know here in a second. I'm going to go ahead and write down with the impact until it's close and then we'll uh, I'll tell you what the factory spec is on that. So I'm going to go look up the torque on that and we'll torque this factory spec, I'll let you know, and then we'll start putting the brakes back together. Yep. Alright, so this is 118 foot-pounds of torque. So 
So go ahead and tighten out the torque wrench, 118 foot pound. Now before you put this back on, we want to clean all this rust off of here. Uh, you don't have to clean it off of here, obviously, because it's brand new, but uh, you do want to clean this up. You don't want any kind of vibration when you hit the brake. You wouldn't think a little bit of rust like that would make a difference, but it can make a huge difference uh, when, you're, when you're braking. So I, normally what I use is one of these uh, angle grinders with 3M on there. Uh, just use whatever you got, I guess. If this, these are, it's a good investment to get one of these. This video is so noisy, you got the air compressor going, the fan. So you want to clean it up so it's like this, it's all free of rust and debris. Then you're safe to put this back on. Grab your, uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn the wheel and then we'll start it back up. Alright, so now I got the, you know, the rotor back on. Put the, put the uh, caliper bracket and caliper, line it back up with the spindle here. Got the two 18 uh, millimeter bolts started. So we're just gonna run those back down real quick. It's hard to see. And I already put the uh, bolts back fo through for your speed sensor ABS. So we're just gonna run those down. There's one back here. So that's pretty much it. You put your wheel back on, take it for a test drive. On these wheel bearings, uh, it's basically two things that can happen. They can the uh, bearings themselves will wear out, and they you'll have you can jack your car up, and you can move your wheel, uh, have movement in the wheel. Now you have to get under and look because it could be a tie rod or, or a ball joint or something like that. But normally, if you can see your tie rods, your ball joints aren't moving, but the wheels moving. You, normally on those two, with ball bearings, there's a lot of play in them, or on the uh, hub, there's a lot of play. That's one way those go out, or they can, like this car was making a humming or a groaning noise going down the high, usually about over 15, 20 miles per hour, you start hearing a rah, 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 like a groaning noise, and if you turn the wheel, it may go away. A lot of times, if you say it's a left one, you turn the wheel to the left, it'll go away, and vice versa. That's not always the case, but uh, anyway, if you hear like a loud uh, groaning or humming noise, and uh, that's a good sign, it could be a wheel bearing, which is what this one was. So that's pretty much it on a wheel bearing on a probably what 2008 to 16, 17 Avenger, whenever they stopped making them. All the Mopars are pretty similar. I just did one on a caravan, it's very similar. Uh, you know, I think it's easier to pull this axle out and get to the bolts. And it's pretty much it, just a few basic hand tools and air, air tools will help a lot, of course. And you can do this probably less than an hour in your driveway. So uh, that's pretty much it for a hub on an Avenger. It's time to get this hoopty back on the road, and we'll see you on the next one.